We were stressed anchoring your Clulet's busy fishing harbor, but we didn't have much choice. We needed to get groceries, fishing supplies, and we couldn't resist to satisfy a desperate craving for hot wings and a beer. Plus, we had to stay overnight to pick up friends early the next morning. They were going to teach us how to fish, and we were so excited to eat some fresh fish over the next week. But with crowded waters and nearly losing our anchor to what we think was a massive cable, we couldn't help but wonder, was it all worth it? Are you ready for adventure? Subscribe now because we're getting ready for the great Siberian sushi run. We're not sure what's happening here. We're heading into Yukulit. We're following this boat in. I see you. And then they just came to like a dead stop in front of us, Blaine. They're like, let's just stop and let them go because they're coming and cutting us off now. Really? Yes. What the f are you doing, you chaps? Go, go. We'll follow you in. Go. Yeah, turn, go. He has apparently decided he wants to go out. Come to a dead stop, and then you start going out. Make a decision. Stop or go. And you're messing with a 78 foot boat. It takes us a little bit more to stop than you. Oh well. Stop. Shake my head. We were just following him. So we're taking it nice and slow so we, we wouldn't overtake him. We matched speeds with him. We were Match following him directly speeds. and then he came to a dead stop. Oh well. Okay, let him go do his thing. We're going into Yuki. Came to a dead stop right in front of us. You clue it. Here we come. It's okay, Blaine. We're gonna go find a pub. Yep. We're over it. He's gone. Yep. <sighs> We're just heading into Yuklulit. This is one of our most favorite towns ever. It is so cute. They got a little grocery store, fun little stores. They've got a pub, but we've never come by boat. We've always driven. And once I bicycled into here when I did Tour de Rock. So quite excited to come in by boat. Well, we are gonna go right past all the marinas everything and my uncle Chuck love him he gives us advice all the time says we can anchor at the far end of Yuklulit in it you clue it in can we just call it Yuki because that's what the locals call it and people who are from here so we're just going to call it Yuki so we're going to go right down Yuki Inlet right to the end anchor down there and then we are going to head to shore and see what we can find including a pub Coming in by car and bike is easy compared to coming in by boat. You never know what the boats around you are going to do. They're coming towards you, they're coming in from behind you, they're coming in from beside you, and trying to find the navigation areas and the shallow spots is always a challenge. While coming in, we also saw the sunken boat, which unfortunately is not unusual for the West Coast. And then we saw an abandoned house, which really looked like it was about to fall into the water. Oh, look at this. It's like a whole bunch of diesel spill. We're out of it. Oh, that stunk. No clue where that came from, but it was like a heck of a lot of shit. Diesel. Not good. Okay, let's go find a place to anchor. Check out that boat. Isn't that cool? Look at all the solar panels they have on the roof. That is like a hotel. And that's exactly where we decide to anchor. Over by the boat with all the solar panels. What we're doing right now is I've got the anchor out and now Blaine is actually backing down on it. It's going to bring the chain out of the water. We're stretching it out. When the chain comes out of the water, he keeps going out on it. So until we get a hook and he is, see that jump, that was not a hook. 
So he is actually checking on land. He's marking himself to see how much the boat is coming back. But that was a big jump. And Blaine can't see the chain, so my arm is showing him the angle that it's at. No clue what the bottom is. I'm thinking it's like crab grass or uh, eel grass because all the crab traps, but not happy. Not happy, pulling it up. And that's what happens when you don't get a hook. He's a bit stressed. I'm not sure, but he seems a bit not happy about this whole situation. So we moved to the other side of the harbor, and when we put out the anchor this time, it hooked. We also want to make sure there was a good hook because we had to go to shore, which meant leaving Maggie on board Tangaroa all by herself. And I know she can't start the engines. So first thing, I'm not talking right today. First thing, first things. First things first is we are going to go find a fishing supply store because our prawn line is not looking healthy and I don't want to lose, lose the prawn um, traps. But the sea lion has a fish or something and he's playing with it. There's two of them. Look, he's got a fish in his mouth. See, he's got a fish. So there's a stop sign right there. Stop. Are we just supposed to stop our boat? Uh, I've never seen a stop sign on the water before, have you? Uh, it says stop. Stop. <laughs> that smells like food. No wonder I'm hungry. I smell food. It smells really good. I know. Going long. Is that the store that you're talking yeah. about? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're just going to the chandlery. The guy over there said we could put the dinghy right there. Perfect. Oh, that works. And it's just right here. I see, there's the rest of them. Yeah. I assume those are back still. Oh, look, it's a sale. <laughs> I had no clue what to buy, though. Oh, and the coffee machine's out of order. Hey. Hello. What are we getting? Uh, get some herring. We were like deer in headlights in the store, but luckily Captain Paul got on the phone and told us exactly what we needed to purchase. Okay, gotcha. So we have a big net. Don't, tell him not to bring a net. We got a big one on board. Oh, okay. Jenna says don't bother with a net. We got a big one on board. <gasps> yeah. Playing the prawn traps are on special too. Right. So okay, well we'll grab some we'll, herring, sorry, you anchovies, some herring. medium or large. Herring, medium or large. Large. Oh my God! Really? Okay. How how many do you think? They they come in they come in bags of six. Right. Bags of seven, fourteen dollars, fifteen dollars for bags. a bag of seven. Okay. Okay. Well, fourteen and sixteen are good weights. What? Okay. Right on. I'll see you when you find it. Sorry, some what? Uh, slip weights. What are slip weights? Mm -hmm. yeah, no. Should I ask? No, but I just well, I could ask this gentleman here, but he's filling a rod, which is really cool. Does anybody know what slip weights are? <laughs> What size? Um, apparently we need um, a couple of 14 ounce slip weights and a couple of 16 ounce slip weights. Uh, you have uh, the 12s here, but I think like the biggest ones. I don't think you'll find 14 or 16 in here. No, okay. No, these are the 12s here, right? Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Yeah. Not I, these I ones? The, yeah, yeah that's... Right are these slip weights? Yep. Okay. Balls here. Oh, oh get yeah. some balls, Blaine. Yeah. Well, he... I don't know what... I can check with Paul and see what, because I mean, he knows cannonballs, so he would ask for a cannonball if you wanted a cannonball, so. We've got some of these on board, too. Do we? Yeah. Okay. 
Are okay. So excited. We just spent a bunch of money at the fishing store, but you know what he, this lure is going to catch me some lingcod. Lane, I'm excited about this. Lingcod. I love lingcod. I'm going to be mooching. Mooching? Gooching? What do you call it? X wrap. Look, slowly sinking soft tail, and I have an extra tail. You really can't go wrong with extra tail. <laughs> We're off to find a pub. We're off to find a pub. To pub, to pub, to pub, to pub. We're off to find a pub. Hello. Hello. Hey, Captain, how's it going? Captain Paul's oh, yeah. phoning. He is so excited about tomorrow morning. He's coming up. He's leaving Victoria at 4 a.m. They're going to be on board for the next week and we're going to do some fishing. Yes. And I just got the super lure. I'm going to catch some ling cod. Yes, gotcha. So excited. But first, puppy, 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 puppy. The hardest part is you never know where you can dock your dinghy. That's always a challenge of places. It's like, we want to go to the pub. It says Marine Pub right there, but where can we dock the dinghy? This is like some serious fishing. Hmm? Wow. Oh. Sorry, am I totally in your way here? Amazing. What are those ones? Little sole things? Is that the little flat one? Ling cod? Little flat thing. I caught a little one the other day. A little flounder thing. Whoa, look at all this, Blaine. All look good. Rockfish? Yeah. Rockfish. What are those? Those are called cabbies on. What are they called? Cabbies on. Wow. These are yummy. I love rockfish. Really yeah. Yeah. yeah nice catch. Yeah. Good day out. Good day out is this one day? Yeah. <laughs> nice. Two days up today already. Yeah. <laughs> wow. We picked the perfect pub because we can sit here at our table and look at our boat out there. And Blaine can keep an eye on it in case anybody goes on it, right? Yep, absolutely. I can perfectly see the And what's really cool about this pub is, so when you're in Dufino, you go to a pub and everybody's talking about the surf and the wave and everything here. Here, all they do is talk about fishing. It's like, I caught this many fish, this is where it's catching, this is where they're biting. It's crazy, like massive fish tails, everybody's talking fishing. It's kind of fun. Maybe if I just be quiet and listen, I can learn something. Very happy. I asked the chefs for blue moon wings, which they actually don't have the menu here, which is when they mix hot sauce and blue cheese, and then they dip the wings in it. It is so yummy. Look. And Blaine had a, what are you eating? What are you eating? It's a cordon bleu sandwich. He has a mouthful of french fries. That's kind of weird. Have a mouthful of cordon bleu sandwich. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't see a bite out of it. Was it good? Yeah. You just dipped it in the ketchup, though. Yeah. Oh, he's a I love him. You need some mayo for your french fries. All good. So tomorrow morning, Paul's coming on board at like 8.30 in the morning and we're going fishing. So I can't wait to show you and maybe catch some fish. That's the plan. We've got a new freezer we gotta fill. So let's do it. Okay, so after we have had the pub, now yeah. it's time to head up and provision. So we're gonna find a liquor store, which is up here someplace. We have our wagon that's empty and the grocery store closes at nine. Hey, that's the liquor store right there. Well, it's practically meant to be. Well, it's a bit of a walk uphill. But you know what? When we come back, you know what that means? Downhill. Okay. The liquor store in the co-op is just there. Provision. And we'll be good to go again to head back out to the broken group.
this little dude. <laughs> There's usually a food truck right here. I'll take your word for it. It's beautiful. We'll come back to the liquor store. I feel like we should get some crack and rum, but I think AP will bring some. Yeah. You might. Looks like it sprung a plank. <laughs> Look at the netting up here. Yeah. Torpedo? No, Holy it's, crap! It's some sort of a... What is that? Well, like um, What do they call them? I can't remember. It's all garbage. Look at the whole thing's made out of beach garbage, probably. Probably, that's amazing. Okay, the, that's cool. Hey, you see this fence? Gate. The big, cutest little church. You know what the funny thing is? What? Holy Family was the name of my school in Louisiana. Really? Left. Yeah. And it was a Catholic, Catholic primary or uh, elementary school. Huh. Interesting. Okay, I think we're almost there if I remember correctly. It's just up here. <laughs> Not that much. If I figured a wagon would be easier than a cart. Yeah, Bocaccini. I'm thinking some smoked gouda. Oh, burrata. Look how expensive burrata is. You see any smoked gouda? Yo. Mejo. There's something else we were running out of that I noticed. Hmm. Well, we have lots of blue cheese dressing. Oh, they got Russian here. Three for $8.97. Sorry, I don't find Russian anywhere. Three. It's three for eight ninety seven. Get three. Okay. Um. That was our first time provisioning with our wagon, and it worked perfect. We just took it right into the store, and now we can walk back to the boat. For the little stop at the liquor store first, right, Blaine? But how was it with the wagon in the aisles? Perfect. Just like a cart. Not quite as maneuverable, but we did all right. <laughs> okay, wagon for the win. Like, seriously. <laughs> and then it was time to head back to the boat. And I have to say, it was so nice to see that she was safe, sound, and exactly where we left her. It's that time. Are you ready to do some Pacific Coast fishing? Because Captain Paul is coming on board right now to teach us all how to fish, and we want to catch some halibut, salmon, and hopefully some lingcod. Let's fill the freezers for winter. Look, here comes Captain Paul and Ange. Woohoo! Bring on the fishing! Woo! As you can see, he brought two bins of fishing gear full of everything we would need to catch halibut, salmon, and whatever else was underneath the ocean. Before we get going and do some fishing, I've got to pick up the crab trap, which I put down last night, and take Maggie to shore. Because she is like, I gotta pee! Joys of having a dog on board, you gotta get them to shore. Oh, I spilled my tea. I hate when I spill my tea. It's usually pretty normal when I get onto the dinghy that I spill my tea. Okay, Meg, let's take you to shore first and then we'll get the crab trap. It's always our goal on any new anchorage we go to is to find an island for Maggie to pee on. And then we dub it Isla de Merde. Okay, Maggie goes to shore, go pee. I keep the dinghy in forward, pushed against here. 
Maggie, go pee! She does understand we've got a mission today. We have to catch fish. She's got to get on with it. Okay, she's peeing. Let's go! Good girl. Okay, crab trap. It's a dead fish. I'm really surprised a bird or somebody hasn't picked that up yet or something. Okay, crab trap. I think that's mine right there. I think these are mine. What do you guys think we'll catch? I got no clue. It's a jellyfish. You guys see that? Isn't that cool? Ooh! 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 That scared me! Maggie, I know it scared you too. The one little rock crab. I think the rest got out tonight because they ate all my chicken. Okay. One little rocky and we'll deal with it back on the boat. Okay, let's go do some real fishing. This is going to be fun. I'm actually quite excited. Okay. First, let's get this boat out of this harbor. Okay, we're getting serious now. We're putting up the... Fishing rod holder right there. We got to put the base first. If you remember, I took it off because I had to take all the paint off from behind it and the bondo. But so we're just putting it back on and getting ready to do some serious fishing. Hey, what type of fishing are we doing today there, Captain Paul? Probably for coho. We're going coho fishing today. Yeah, a little okay. bit of a wind, so probably coho. Lane has started the engines. I am starting to pull the anchor. Let the fishing adventure begin. First, we got to get out of Yukulit. And this inlet is busy. Like, look at all the boats. In and out and all around. Okay, let's get this anchor up. And, uh, head out. We are stuck on something. Going backwards right now. Yeah, he's trying to break it loose. He's gonna go forward and backward, forward and backward with the engines. This is the other thing that stresses us out about anchoring in harbors. You never know what's on the bottom, especially if the harbor has huge history. From cables, to wrecked boats, to cars, to all sorts of industrial debris. It is so easy to catch your anchor and get stuck. As you can see, our windlass could not lift our anchor at all. When this happens, we actually use the boat's engines to try and break the anchor free. Like we're constantly having 
trying to break this chain loose. Go forward, go back, use the engines, and see what the hell is going on. But it's coming up now. It's going to be interesting to see what we lift, if anything. This seems to be coming up now, okay. Yep. 150 at the surface. This might take a while. We can't let the windlass keep trying to pull it up because it puts way too much stress on it. So we threw the engines in reverse to see if we can pull it free that way. We do have dive gear on board, but neither of us wanted to dive in this dirty water. It's exactly what it is. We're having to pull on the anchor. It's dragging around something down there. Watch us bring up like a car or something. We're not going to pull up the anchor for a little bit. Blaine's going to try and move Tangaroa to the right or the left. And let's see if we can just get ourselves out of this situation. I think it's free. It just went really slack for a second. But she's too close to the hull. Yeah. Now we had two worries. Number one, do we still have an anchor? And number two, what was it bringing up? That was scary. So we've got 50 feet now at the surface just coming up. We should be off the bottom. It's around 50 feet deep here. But we always had to put on the dive gear. Blade always had to go under to see what was going on. And it is not a nice day to dive. He would not have been happy. But uh, yeah, anchor's almost up. I wonder if we caught anything with it. Blade thinks we knocked out power to that whole area. <laughs> that would be funny. OK, let's go catch some fish, Paul. You bet. OK, let's go do it. Surprisingly, nothing came up with the anchor, but it did have some fresh gouges in it. That was probably the most stressful bringing up an anchor I have almost ever done. I think when we drop these guys off, we are not going to be anchoring you to cool it again. We'll drop off and then we'll head back out to someplace. That was... Thought I, might have to use that new I know, I told them that. I said, oh, Blaine's not going to have fun diving on this. Oh, We're going to take a... Would definitely not have. You would not be happy. No, okay, not, now, uh, do you want me to drive out of here? Do you uh, trust me enough? I trust you, yeah. Do you want to go work on whatever we're working on? Yeah, I would We're say just going to go slow. Just leave it in neutral, or not neutral, in idle. Okay. You go work on whatever, I will drive. We are okay. Female. We're fishing. We are fishing. We are fishing. Yes. fishing. Be very, very quiet. Fishing for salmon. <laughs> this came on the boat, which was so cool. And we got two rods out. The biggest thing when you're fishing is you have to give a token of your appreciation to King Neptune. So you catch lots and lots of fish. So we'll show you how it's done. Oh, King Neptune, great king of the deep. We love you so much. We appreciate you giving us your bounty. Give a little dose of the best rum there is. Crap it. Absolutely. Oh, King Neptune, please release your bounty to us, to the great Tangaroa, god of the sea, as you, our brothers. Cheers. <laughs> Take a wee little sip, sip because we don't usually drink and drive. Just enough to put on my lips, that's it. Okay. See, King Neptune and Tangro are actually the same because they're brothers. They are. God of the sea. Let's God see what we sea. can catch. Fish oh, on! Not anymore. No fish on anymore. Fish on. No fish on anymore. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Slippery. Why is it called? Okay. So what happens when the fish hits really hard, it pulls this out and this weight just slips down to the end. Oh. Yeah. We haven't had a fish do that yet. Not yet. Okay. Well, we did earlier. And do you have a treble hook or a single hook? Single hook. A bar hook. On a spoon. Fish on! Fish on! Fish on! Fish on! Go, 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 go! Come on. We're down real. 
I'll get the net ready. How are you at netting? Well, I netted Blaine. <laughs> oh, you did. What a catch. I know. Blaine was my first catch. Okay, maybe not first, but anyways. We'll need the net. that we're gonna put down. And I have to say, I don't think I've ever set a prawn trap with the big boat. So this will be, a, this will be interesting, right, Paul? Absolutely. Blaine is actually driving Tangaro in reverse while we're doing this to make sure we don't wrap the prawn line around the propellers. And in case you're wondering why we're not launching off the stern, the traps just happen to be on the bow, so it was the easiest way to do it. Next time, they'll go off the stern. And after some fishing and some prawning, it was time to find a quiet cove. And we found just that at Nettle Island. And we only caught one coho, but you know what? We only needed one for dinner. So we're cooking up the fish we caught today. There we go, look at that. It's a perfect size fish for fur people. Look at the color of it. I almost want to taste it right now. I love sashimi. Okay, that was gummy. Good sashimi quality salmon. It's gorgeous. And holding this one. If it ever gets to by it. I'm so tired, I can't remember. Beans and rice with vegetables in it. It's absolutely yum. Okay, let's eat. And loving it. And I'd show you Blaine, but we just woke him up from a nap. The poor kid is tuckered. He's all tuckered out. So hopefully he'll come join us. So was it worth all the stress? For an evening like this, it sure was. Now it was time to cuddle in and get a great night's sleep. We sure hope you enjoyed our exploration of Yuklulet. If you want to check out more, especially around the Broken Island group, subscribe or check out this video. We sure you'll love it. And we'd love if you checked out our Patreon. We've created lots of awesome perks for you, including seeing videos from both our channels early and ad-free.